All right, today we got a friend of mine all the way from the UK. This man is an artist, a podcaster, a, a, a viral sensation, a fitness expert, and so much more. I got my man Zuby. Don't you go anywhere. Hey, yo, what's going on? It's Ruslan with KingsDreamENT.com. This channel exists to encourage, empower, inspire you to live out God's dream. Uh, I got somebody with me live. We're in Atlanta for A3C Music Festival. I've been trying to get this brother on the channel for, it's been, what, about a month now or so? Something like that. And we've been able to make it happen. Zuby, how are you feeling, man? I'm feeling good, man. A little bit tired. It's late, but, you know, we're here. Let's do it. Let's get it, man. <laughs> so, uh... Let's 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 jump right into it. You are originally, uh, you're born in the UK, but you were raised in uh, Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. right? And your parents were your your dad was a doctor. My dad's a doctor. Yeah, your dad is a doctor. Yeah, yeah. And you 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 grow up with this interesting perspective of being in a whole other country, but yet you're British, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And you don't have a British accent. Nope. So like, like talk about what it was, what was it like growing up in Saudi Arabia and, and that, that whole experience, man? Yeah, no problem, man. So the way I normally summarize it is I'm a British Nigerian who grew up in Saudi Arabia and went to an American school. So when I'm trying to explain, There you go, right? When, yeah, when people, hear, <laughs> when people hear my accent and see where I'm from or whatever, and I'm trying to explain it all in a sentence, that's mm -hmm. kind of the most concise way that I can do it. Okay. So um, yeah, I moved to, so I was born in England. I moved to the, I moved to Saudi Arabia when I was a baby, when I was one. All okay. my earliest memories are from Saudi Arabia. Right. My parents got an opportunity to work out there, so we moved out there, uh, myself and my four older siblings. Okay. And so yeah, that's where I grew up. I studied there, went to school there until yep. I was in fifth grade. Yep. Then I went to boarding school in the UK for a while, did really well in school. Um, got top grades in my class, went to Oxford University, studied yep. computer science, and uh, yeah, worked in the corporate world for a couple of years. Yeah. 2011, I left that to go pursue my music full time, and here we are in 2019. Haven't That's starved yet. so dope, man. Now, your family, uh, well, you're Nigerian. Your mm -hmm. family's originally from Nigeria My as well? family background is originally from Nigeria. Parents, um, first, first generation immigrant, second yeah, generation? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, first. Do you think that being Nigerian, having parents that immigrated to the UK and then were working in Saudi Arabia, became doctors, right? High, mm -hmm. high performers, outliers. They sound like outliers. Uh, do you think that that um, you being able to excel mm -hmm. and, and do everything you've been able to do, do you think that's a byproduct of kind of having that immigrant mentality? I think it certainly helped. Um, I obviously have... Everybody's only got their own background, mm -hmm. so I don't know who or what I would exactly I would have been or done in a parallel universe. In terms of my own personality, I'm someone who is very, very, um, how would I put it? I've got, I've got, I'm very strong-minded and strong-willed, and cool. I, I always have been. That's kind of like an innate personality trait. So I imagine that regardless of what kind of situation I'd kind of found myself into, mm -hmm. I would certainly like to think that I would kind of excel regardless because gotcha. I'm someone who's pretty hard to influence, especially negatively. Um, so some of that is just my personality. But then of course, you know, I've got, I've got fantastic parents, fantastic yeah. family. I've had a lot of opportunities yeah. and you know, I've, lots of the stuff I do in the world is to, you know, try to make the most out of that, you know, right. make the most of that potential and to not squander those blessings. Yeah. And Oxford, which yeah. is where you graduated from, that's like your guys' elite of elite. That's like our Harvard kind of, right? Like, yeah, is yeah. That, is that the yeah, well, top equivalent? five universities in the entire world. How was it going through that system, like, in, in graduating with a degree in yeah, I mean, it was science and then becoming a full-time rapper? Yeah, so <laughs> it, it was kind of weird. So I didn't start rapping until I was in university. Okay. When I was in my first year, I started doing music and, you know, found out I was able to rap and mm -hmm. had some talent for it. So I developed that and released my first album when I was in my second year of university. Okay. Um, and then... Yeah, the l sort of light bulb moment, I guess, when I realized I could do a little bit more with it was after I released that first album and people actually started buying it once I started selling. What year was that? That was 2006. 2006. So, so, you, so, so this is good because there's a lot of aspiring rappers that watched it. Okay. So your first record comes out in 06. Uh, yep. You discover you could start selling music, but you didn't go full-time till 2011. Yeah, so I graduated in 2007. Okay. 
Um, I took a year out and did my music full time for a year when I released my second album, The mm. Unknown Celebrity. Okay. Uh, but I already had a job lined up in London, but I kind of pushed the job offer back for one year. So I was like, cool, I'll take this job. Yeah. yeah. But um, I want to go and just do my music and travel right. around and see what I can do with that. Right. So I did that. And then, um, yeah, I moved to London. I worked as a management consultant, actually, for three years mm -hmm. whilst doing my music stuff on the side. I mm -hmm. put out another EP called How I Feel during that time period. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, in, I want to say, October 2011, I left that. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to go and I'm going to go and do what I feel I was put on this earth to do. So I left that and took took the plunge, uh, yeah. took a big pay, took a big pay hit, <laughs> um, you know, took a big security hit and just went, you know what, I'm going to see what I can, if I put all my time and my energy yeah. into my music and other creative endeavors, as it's kind of branched out into, yeah. then I knew I would, you know, I, I have I had a lot of faith in myself, you yep. know, I believed I could do what I wanted yeah, to. Yeah. And so, That's and you dope. know, I also thought, you know, as long as I, as long as I can survive, right. as long as I'm not going to put myself under the water, right, right. this is the time to make this move because I right. don't have a lot of risks or concerns that may come in 10 years time or in 15 years time or whatever. Right. It makes a lot more sense to do this in my early 20s yeah. than to do this in my even early 30s, yeah. let alone early 40s. Yeah. So. Um, what was your parents' reaction when you're like, yo, you have finished Oxford, you're super killing it, and then it's like, hey, mom and dad, like, I think I'm gonna go after this music thing yeah. and be a full-time artist. They said, you know, son, whatever you want to do in this world, we will support you. That's dope. Yeah. You guys are good parents, bro. I love my parents. <laughs> I love my parents to death. My parents are incredible. Tell me the process of that four-year process of you started doing a five-year process. Started mm -hmm. doing music in 2006, go full-time in 2011. Yeah. Right. Most people they start music, they want to go full-time tomorrow. Yeah. Right. Right. That's like the and then that becomes almost like an idol. Like, oh, if I could just go full-time. Right. Mm -hmm. it took you five years. It took me a little longer than that. I didn't go full-time with music until 2015. Mm -hmm. So I started around the same time you started, like just taking it seriously, went full-time. And it was, that was a long time for me. Yeah. In the process, I also got married and had a family and all sure. that kind of stuff. Right. Um, what was it about 2011? that made you believe that you can go full-time with music? Was it you had a certain number of shows lined up? Okay. Was it, was it? oh, dude, I just sold 1,000 CDs, 2,000 CDs mm. out of my trunk, merch mm. pipe? Well, like, what was popping to the point where you're like, okay, I may not make 100,000 that I would make in the mm. private sector, mm. but I can work for myself and make 20 or 30,000 and sure. survive? What was yeah. it? So I think that by the time I left, I think I'd probably sold maybe around 3,000 or 4,000 albums in total. Total, everything you'd put out. Yeah, like everything, EP, every, yeah okay. everything I'd put yep. out. So that yep. by then it would have been two albums and one EP. I think I'd sold, you know, somewhere between three and 5,000. That's great. By that time, just by just, going out on the street. Just doing, just hustling. Doing the old school street hustle, traveling out to different wow, cities. Wow, you were one of them dudes like in New York where they what run up of, on you and hand you the CD and then, no, and then no, ask no, you for no, a donation? No, 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 I wasn't. You haven't no. been to New York yet. So when you get to New York, no, you'll I, meet those I people on Times Square. Oh, you haven't been to New York? Okay, I'm out on this trip. And people do it in the UK too. I know, I never did it like that. I've always been totally upfront with people. Okay. No, I don't, no scammy tactics. I would just, you know, go introduce myself to people. Okay. You know, introduce myself to people, tell them who I am. Yeah. Ask them what kind of music they're into. If they like, if they're open to it, then I, you know, I'd have my headphones on me, play yeah. them some of the music, wow. let them hear it. So just one by one, you're just out yeah, there man, hustling one by one. one by one. Yeah, man. I, I mean, I've, I sold over 25,000 albums. Wow. Doing that. Yeah, man. 20, 25,000? 25,000. Physical CDs. Physical CDs out my And back this here. is... This is I, up until what year? Like up until recently, is, or the, up until 2011? You sold yeah. 25, so this though. is in total. No, this is in total now. Okay. So I mean, I don't go out there and do that now. I haven't had to do it that way yeah. now for for a little while. But um, that's really how it it all started. Mm -hmm. um, so from that 2006 to 2011 period, so I was doing that. Um, so I was building. I was building my fan base. Mm -hmm. You know, I had um, like a few th few thousand followers online. People mm -hmm. checking out my stuff. Sold a mm -hmm. few thousand albums. Performed in a couple different cities mm -hmm. and I think a couple different countries by that stage. Mm -hmm. So really what happened was two things. Number one, both careers were starting to interfere with each other. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I was That's usually how it goes, right? Yeah. You're like, ah, 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 and you just get to a point where you're like, you can't do both. Yeah. Yeah. I was progressing in my music. Yeah. I was progressing in my corporate career. Yeah. They were starting to negatively have an impact on yep. each other. Yep. And I knew which one I wanted to be doing. Yep. I was looking, you know, I was one of the younger guys 
where I worked, I was working with lots of people in, you know, senior to me in their mm-hmm. 30s, their 40s, 50s, even in their 60s. Mm-hmm. And I was just thinking, okay, in 10, 20, 30 years time, do I want to be this guy? Mm. And, you know, no offense to anybody in that world, but the obvious answer was no. This is not, <laughs> this is not what I'm, no, this is not, this is not what, yeah, yeah, yeah. this is not what I'm here for. Yeah, yeah. This isn't, God hasn't given me the talents yeah. and the mind yeah. that I have. Yeah in order for me to do this. Yeah. The, the amount of people who I can have a positive impact on in the world yep. doing this is is minuscule. Yep. Right? There's no yep. there's no scale to it. The world's yep. not going to remember me yep. because I climbed the corporate ladder yep. and you know even if I did all right. Yeah. It's just it just wasn't for me. Yeah. You know? and I think as a creative person as someone who's entrepreneur entrepreneurial minded mm-hmm. i'm sure you can relate to that yeah feeling. you know there's a there's a higher calling a higher purpose Absolutely. You're, you're wired a certain way that most people are not yeah and so you don't want to squander that potential you want to go out there build something on your own and see okay it might take a lot longer yep. the path may be a lot harder it yep. won't be as linear it won't yep. be as clearly set out yep but in the long term yep. and also for my own happiness and my own sanity yeah this is what I know I need to be doing. So for yeah, myself, yeah, yeah. it wasn't a bi- it wasn't actually a hard decision. Uh-huh. A lot of people think it was like a really hard decision, or it took a huge amount of bravery or courage or something. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like no, it, it, it didn't. And yeah. to be honest, as well, I mean, I'm I'm blessed. I know I'm a smart guy. I'm highly educated. Mm-hmm. I'm not ever going to be out on the street shaking a cup, right. even if this whole thing went totally right, right. horribly wrong. Right. What's the worst that happens? Yep. I go and I apply for a job and I get another job. Yep. Yeah, cool. Maybe uh, maybe I feel like slightly embarrassed or I feel a little sad I didn't, yeah. you know, get to where I wanted. Yeah. But fine, you know, yeah. it's, not, it's not it's not the end of the world. So yeah, man. to me the risk was not doing it. The right. risk would have been, man, imagine if it, I I stay here and in 15 years time, you know, I'm in my mid 30s or like my late 30s and I'm kind of like, man, you know, like I was <laughs> I was good at, I'll be that guy telling everyone, you know, I used to rap. I like, used I was, to rap. I was a good, I was actually, the old guy yeah, telling everybody yeah, used, I used to rap. rap. And people are looking at you like, you really? Nah, nah, you were. So I was like, man, I've got, I've got to at least try, man. Yeah. Like, let me, let me go and do this. Yeah. And with me, it wasn't even about trying. I knew I'd be successful at least to some degree. Mm-hmm. To what level I will reach, I still don't know. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm still climbing. I don't know what, there's many, many, many more levels mm-hmm. I can go. And so to some people, I'm already successful. Mm-hmm. So I don't necessarily, by my own standards, consider myself successful sure. yet because I know sure, what sure, sure. I know what I'm capable of. Yeah. Yeah. But I know that I'm on the I'm on the path. I'm yeah. on the right track. I've yeah. done certain things, especially you know, considering I've done it totally independent. Yeah, you know, being on first British rapper on Joe Rogan. You know, yeah. um, selling as many albums as I have, building a following of over two hundred thousand people on social media. Yeah, you know, five million plus views on YouTube. Whatever it is, it's yeah. like, man, like I've done that. I don't have a manager. I yeah. don't have an agent. Yeah. I don't have a team. I don't have a label. I'm yeah. just me. Yep. So. That's so dope, man. Thank you, man. That's thank so you. dope. Julio, 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 Julio Jones. I'm from Atlanta. You throw me the ball and I scoot in the zone. They hit me up for a deal like it's something I do on the phone. Just cause it's me in the studio don't mean I do it alone. Julio, 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 Julio Jones.